Hey, how you guys doing? Look, I hope your week was wonderful and you learned a lot. I know I surely did. And I also just want to welcome you back to another of our Sunday services where every Sunday we will always get into the Word until the Lord returns or until the day I die. That's the whole point of building a ministry. So today's message is going to be a little bit about who you are, what you are, and how we can get you spiritually awakened. And we're going to introduce something in this message like the Nephilim and the seed of Satan. And look, if you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified every week when we post and you can see our growth. And look, if you're a returning member or subscriber, be sure to leave a like and a comment because when you do that, it helps us out with the YouTube algorithm algorithm to push this message out to other Christians so they can grow spiritually as well. Okay, look, I, without further delay, let's just get right into the message, shall we? Welcome, welcome, welcome back, everyone. Let's get right into the Word. Before we do that, I just want to let you know to always take this stuff very seriously. So you should have your Bible, you should have your notebook, and something that I like to do whenever I take notes is have different colored markers. Whenever a verse is presented, I always use, you know, like a marker to do that. So make sure you take this very seriously because we have a lot to get to learn into. We have a lot to get to learn into. That didn't make any sense, but you know what I mean. All right, so we're going to start this off. We're going to start this message off with 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. So let's get right into that. It's written, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, what? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, right? He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You may have heard of this word before. You may have heard of this verse before, right? You know, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. But do you really know what this means? You know, a lot of Christians, when they say this, they think, oh, you know, I had an old life before. You know, I used to be in the world. I used to drink. I used to do this. I used to do that. And now I'm in Christ. I'm a new creature now. You know, all things have passed. All things have become new. That's not really what this is saying, okay? So are you ready? I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you the Greek word. Therefore, if any man be in Christos, right, Christ, he is a new katesis. He is a new katesis in the Greek. Katesis, what this word actually means, it means a new, crea a new creation, not a creature. A new creation, you are something completely new. It's never been created before. It's never been done before. It's something new. This is new. Just to give you an example, right? Just to give you an example. When God said, let us now make man in our image, right? He said, let us now make man in our image, right? That was the first man that God created in his own image. That is a creation. When God created the beasts and the earth, you know, the beasts and the fowls of the air, that is a creation. And you see, Jesus Christ was the last person of the series of the Adamic race. So you had obviously Adam, right? And then you had Noah, and then Abraham, so on and so on and so on and so on and so forth, until Jesus Christ, finally it was done. So he, Jesus Christ was the last person of that series. I'll give you a car example, for example, you know. You know like when you have a car, it has like the Model X, Model Y, Model Z, right? And they said, okay, we're done with this series of this car. We're now going to create something new. You are the create something new. Jesus Christ was the last one. He's the Model Z. He was the last of the series of the Adamic race of Adam. He was the last one. Perfect, upright, just, holy God, right, on this earth. And that's why now everyone who is in Christ, if any man be in Christ, he is a new catesis, meaning you're a new creature. You are something new. You're not of the same of everyone that's walking this earth. There are nine to fives, these people, because we're going to get into the different types of races, the different types of people that are walking this earth, like the Nephilim and the seed of Satan, which are, you know, different. They're not like you and I, you know. We, when you come to Christ, this is what you need to awaken. When you come to Christ, yes, old things, everything that was old, everything of the old world, how the old structure, everything that was used to be, that has passed away. And now all things, all things have become new for you. All things have become new for you. You are now a new creature, something completely new. Uh, all right. That's why the Bible says it this way, right? That's why the Bible says it this way in the book of Psalms 82 Verse 6, I have said, meaning Jesus, God is speaking to you now, right? Because the Word of God, if the Word, when the Word of God speaks, 
That's Jesus speaking because He is the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh, right? So, um, obviously that's Jesus. Psalms 82, verse 6. I have said, Ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. If you're children of the Most High, God Himself just called you a god, right? But I know this word might be like, what are you saying? We're going to get into that in the next verse, right? John 10, 35, right? This is what happened when Jesus was um, preaching, right? They had blasphemy. They were telling me He's blasphemy because you're, making, you're just a man and you're making yourself to be like God. And Jesus himself said, if he called them gods, chapter 10, John, verse 35, if he called them gods, meaning me, because that was Jesus, right? He was speaking to them as he, who he was before. If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. You see, the scripture cannot be broken in this sense that God himself, Jesus Christ, has called you a God. And you see the word here. You know, there are people when you read this online, when you go to Psalms 82, they try to say, you know, God didn't really mean that you're gods. He just meant that you're rulers or you're like gods. No, the word here in the actual Greek is the, uh, theoi. It's actually a capital uh, theta. And when he's saying this, that's the word that they use from gods to call it like a deity. You know, if they wanted to use the word rulership, right, or principality, there's another word for a ruler. If he wanted, if John, when he was writing this, wanted to call you a ruler, he would have used the word archon in the Greek, archon. No, but the word used here, if you look at it, if he called them theoi, capital theta, the theta, and to whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken. Now look, am I saying that you should go around calling yourself a god? No, right? Because you need to understand that you are a supernatural being. You are supernatural. You are something more than everyone else that is walking this earth right now. As we're speaking, as I'm speaking to you, you are something greater than they are because you have Christ in you. That's why it says, therefore, if a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Ketesis, you're a new creation, right? Now look, John 1, 10 also says it this way. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Verse 11, he came unto his own. He did, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Verse 12, but as many as received him, to them, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So he gave you the power to be called the sons of God, even to them that believed on his name. Verse 13, which were born, not of blood, you're not born of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, meaning the will of the flesh, sarkos, nor of the will of man, neither of the will of man, but what? But of God. Now when you look at sons of God, this word shows up a, uh, a few times in the Old Testament, and it's usually always referring to angels, right? It's always referring to the sons of God, to angels, right? And if this word, we are now sons of God, and we are greater than angels, because Paul says this, Know ye not that ye shall judge the world, and that ye shall even judge angels? We're greater than angels. So if we're greater than angels, and we're now called sons of gods, what does that make you? I'm just telling you these things now, look. And you go, when you go to the book of Job, right, 1.6, it says, Now there was a day when the sons of God, same sons of God, but this is talking about angels, when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, Satan came also among, among them. So Satan was an angel, he was a cherubim, right? So when all the sons of God, the angels, came before God, Satan came amongst them. All right, we're going to get uh, Genesis 6 again. Right now this is the, um, the Nephilim. Now I'm not going to obviously get into the Nephilim, Right, but I'm just going to introduce to you the Nephilim so you know that there is another species, another creature that's walking this earth with us. You've seen them. Some of you, have, uh, they're, they're, we're going to get into that. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, right? Genesis 6, and it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. That the sons of God, angels, that the angels, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair. 
and they took them wives of all which they chose. So they took them, they raped them, right? They took them from the sons of uh, uh, the daughters of men and they took them, they raped them, right? Verse 4, and there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. So this was before the flood. So the reason why God sent the flood was because the entire world was already corrupt. The flesh was corrupt. You know what? I'm not, actually, let's just, let's, I'll go there with you right now. Genesis 6. I'll give you just an introduction so you know what's going on here, right? And the Lord said, verse 3, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be in 120, right? And verse 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Verse 6, And it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, verse 7, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and of creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Right. Because all flesh was corrupt. Right. Verse 12, this is where we get this. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh, all flesh, had corrupted his ways upon the earth. All flesh. That means every single person that was populated on the entire earth. You see, people in the Bible, they say, why did God kill? Why did God send the flood? God is just a mean person. He's, he always he, he has a bad temper. He always kills everything. When he doesn't like something, when he doesn't agree, he just kills. He murders them. No. You see, these people, they don't understand that the sons of God, it says right there, and the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Right? There were giants in the earth in those days. So what happened? God sends the flood, and the Nephilim actually passed through the flood, right? Because it says right there, and also after that. And also after that, the flood, right? That's why you have David and Goliath and all the other Nephilim that still exist after the flood, right? They took them daughters for men, mighty men which were of old and renowned, right? This is just to introduce to you just the Nephilim. We're not going to obviously get into all that. So there is this hybrid breed, right? The entire earth was corrupted. The flesh was corrupted. The DNA was corrupted. Every single flesh, every single one of them, the sons of God, the angels, went into the daughters of men and the DNA, the blood, was now corrupted. And when God saw the earth that it was all corrupted, he couldn't have contaminated blood in order to bring Jesus through. He had to have pure blood. And Noah was the only one Right? He was the only one. That's why it says right here, verse 8, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Right? Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was the only one who was not corrupt. Noah was the only one that did not take uh, sleep with the angels and have corrupted and with the daughters of men which were already corrupted. Right? And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them, through the Nephilim, right? through this hybrid breed. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth, right? So that's pretty much that, the Nephilim, right? And we're gonna, I'm going to introduce to you, I'm going to show you something, right? Because the Nephilim, they are disembodied spirits. So the demons that are walking this earth, they're not angels. They're the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim. When a Nephilim dies, he becomes a demon. So all these demons that are in the earth, they're not angels. They're the Nephilim spirits, okay? Verse, let's go to, let's go to John chapter 8, verse 37, right? Now, this is Jesus having a conversation with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, right? I know that you are, because they, they were, they were contending, right? I know that you are the, I, the, I know that you are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. You see, these people, no matter how much you preach to them the gospel, they can't hear it, because they already know who they are. My word hath no place in you. It has no place in them. I speak that which I have seen with my Father. Jesus is saying, I speak that which I have seen with my Father in heaven. And ye do that which ye have seen with your Father. So they are doing what they have seen with their Father, the devil. Right? They are children of the devil. This, this is the, the, the seed of Satan. Because let, when we go here, go to Genesis 3, right? Genesis 3 Verse 15, right? This is when he says, and the Lord, well, we can start at verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity, I will put enmity 
between thee, speaking of Satan, and the woman, and between thy seed, Satan's seed, and her seed. Women don't have seed. When you look at the Septuagint, right, the Greek rendition of the Old Testament, the word here is sperma. It's where we get the word sperm from, and men are the only ones that have sperm. So he is saying, I will put between thy seed and her seed, Jesus Christ, right, between Jesus Christ and thy seed, Satan's seed. So Satan has his own children that are walking this earth, and the Nephilim, which are the children of the angels. So we have two different species here, right, two different and you are, a, you are a different one. Because when you're in Christ, you are now something new. You're a new creation. You are not like these other people that are walking this earth. Look, we're going to go back, right? And they answered unto him, Abraham is our father. So they were, they were talking about genealogy. They were saying that, no, we are, Abraham is our father. We're back in John 8, right? 39. Jesus saith unto them, He's saying to them, if you were Abraham's children, oh, if you were Abraham's children, if you were really from Abraham, you would do the works of Abraham, right? Verse 40, but now you seek to kill me. You seek to kill me. A man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham, right? Ye do the deeds of your father. So now he's saying you're doing the deeds of your father, the devil, right? You are doing his deeds, right? Then said they unto him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. So what is he saying? We are not born of fornication. Remember how I was saying that the angels, right, the sons of God came and went in and they were born of fornication, this hybrid breed, this corrupted DNA, the seed of Satan, right? Go to Jude, Jude 1.7, right? Jude 1.7 talks about this. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, right? The people in Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities all around them, the cities, all the cities, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after, they went after what? Strange flesh. Oh my goodness. And set forth an example, right? So the people in Sodom and Gomorrah and all the cities around, what did they do? They went after strange flesh. People think that this is homosexuality, that they went after other men. No. The word strange here in the Greek is heteros, coming from, well, it's heteras, coming from heteros. So when we say heterosexual, we're saying we are of the opposite sex. We are attracted to the opposite sex. But see here, it's, it's sarkos flesh in the Greek, sarkos heteras. So it means a different kind of flesh. It's something different than the one that we are. Ah. It's a different kind of flesh. It's a totally different creature, a, a different entity, a different being. That's why when you go to the book of Genesis, chapter 19, verse 4, you hear the story of Lot. You hear about what happens and what happened. The two angels, the two angels, oh my goodness. The two angels, they went into the city, right? And Lot greeted them and brought them into the house. That's why the whole men, they gathered around the city because they were used to sleeping with angels. They were used to strange flesh. They always fornicated with strange flesh. So when they saw the two angels come into the city, they said, those two. Those two, we want those two angels. We want them. We want, come and bring them out. And they said, so they want, we wanted to get to know them. We wanted to go into them. And you know when they say, when, when, and he knew his wife and they went into them. It's talking about sex. And then Lot said, no, with these one, don't do it. That's why he gave his daughters. He gave it, but they were so corrupt. They were so corrupt. They didn't want women anymore. They wanted strange flesh. They wanted to sleep with angels. Ah. Uh, Strange flesh, right? Strange flesh. They went after strange flesh. The Nephilim are still alive today, just so you know. Um, but they can't do anything. That's what, like, I'm just trying to give you an idea of the different type of species. The Nephilim and the and sat and seed, they can't do nothing. You have the seal of God on your forehead. You are more powerful than they are, right? You are a different creature. You're a you're supernatural being, right? Jesus, uh, John 8, 42. And Jesus said unto them, right? Now he's saying unto them. If you were, if God were your father, he's saying if God was really your father, because he's saying that we have one God, we have Abraham our father and we have one God, right? Ye would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me, right? But he sent me. And Jesus is saying, why do you not understand my speech? Why don't you understand my speech? If you were really Abraham's children and God was your father, why can't you understand my speech? 
even because you cannot hear my word. They can't hear the word of God because they have already been corrupted. They were already corrupted. And there's no, no place. That's why there's certain people you can preach to them the gospel no matter what. But they already know who they are. They will never repent. It's because they are of a different species. They are of a different kind. They are of a heteros sarca or heteros sarcos. Right. You cannot hear my word. For verse 44, what? Right there, plainly. This isn't some sort of literary, you know, literary fantasy or something like, oh, it's just poetic. No, no, no. He knew, Jesus knew exactly who he was speaking to. That's why they say, you brood of vipers, you generation of vipers. Generation, generation of vipers, generation of Satan's seed. Ye are of your father, the devil. Right. Ye of your father, the devil. Now look. The, the crucifixion of Jesus, when he was crucified, the people who crucified him, they were Nephilim. They were of Satan's seed, because the people who killed him, they're of the devil and of the Nephilim. Ready? Watch this. Right. Go to Psalms 22. Psalms 22, 12. Right. Psalms 22, 12. Just so you know that this was the psalm that Jesus quoted when he was on the, you know, when he was on the cross. He says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So, when David was writing this, David was also a prophet, and he was prophesying about the future. Just so you know how, how, how good his prophecy was, you read verse 16. For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and feet, right? They pierced his hands and his feet. Verse 17, I may tell all my bones, they look at and stare upon me. So you know the, the, the cords, right? The whips that they whipped Jesus, they had like claws on them and they would tear the flesh and they would rip and he received this 40 minus one, right? So he's saying, I may tell at my bones that my, they stare and look upon me. Verse 18, they part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture, right? Remember the soldiers, they casted lots and they parted his vesture. So this is a prophecy. This is obviously him prophesying of the future. So when you go to verse 11 now, oh, are you ready? You ready for this? When you go to verse 11, it says, Many bulls have compassed me. Many bulls have compassed me, right, are compassing me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. Strong bulls of Bashan have set me round. What is Bashan, right? You ready for this? Go to the book of Joshua, verse chapter 12, verse 4. Book of Joshua, chapter 12, verse 4. And the coast of Og, king of Bashan. So Og, this person named Og, is king of what? Of Bashan, which he just said, right? In, in, in Psalms, many bulls have compassed me, strong bulls of Bashan, of this place of Bashan have compassed me, beset me around. And in Joshua 12, 4, and the coast of of Og. So this is an entire coast, an entire coast. And I, I, I know where this coast is. <laughs> I'm just not going to tell you where it is right now. And the coast of Og, king of Bashan. So Og, this Og person is king of Bashan, which was a remnant of the giants, the Nephilim. Oh, <laughs> the Nephilim, a, remen a remnant of the giants that swept at Ashtaroth and at Edrei. And then when you go to Deuteronomy 3.11, it tells you of this person, Og, of who he was. For only Og, what king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of the giants. Again, you're hearing, the, he was the only remainder of the giants. So we see, you'll see giants and Nephilim after the flood. Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of iron. His bed was made of iron, like this, iron, iron. Not wood, iron. It is not in Rabbith of the children of Ammon. Nine cubits was the length thereof. Nine cubits. That means 13 feet. His bed was 13 feet long, made of iron. And his, his feet, who knows? They could have been on the edge of the feet, on the bed. 13 feet, his bed made of iron. This guy was like nine meter, uh, three meters tall, right? Nine cubits was the length thereof, and four cubits was the breadth thereof. After the cubit of the man. So when you begin to awaken up to this reality of who you are and of what is really going on in this world, you begin to understand, wait, there's something here. The Bible is specifically talking about Nephilim, right, hybrid race, uh, Satan's seed. So the devil has his own seed. It's right there. This is just the word of God, right? Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan have set around me. So if the bulls of Bashan have set around him, Nephilim, 
and the devil's seed all crucified Jesus. But you see, that's what it is. They're from the beginning, from the beginning of everything. The angels, right? They were trying to corrupt the flesh. They were stop, They were trying to stop Jesus from coming through, through pure, through pure blood. So when you see God saying, you can't eat this, you shouldn't eat that, don't eat this, don't eat that, it's because he knows that this, this is already corrupted, right? When, when, when he had, when he's, when he kills all the children and all the, um, the, the animals, even cows and all that stuff, it's because the angels also went into the animals because, uh, I'm going to get into, so I can't get into that because I won't have time to get into that. So everything, all flesh, all flesh and all cattle, right, was corrupted, right? That's why it says in verse seven, I will destroy man whom I've created, both man and beast and creeping thing and all fowls of the air. Right, for God looked upon the earth, verse 12, and behold, it was corrupt. All flesh had corrupted his ways. So everything, everything was corrupted, right? And when the Nephilim still made it past the flood, they were still doing what their works. They were still corrupting, right? But, that, but that's why after Jesus, now everything has been made pure to eat. As long as you pray, right? Everything has now been sanctified. It's good to eat. Because when Jesus died... All things have become new. Everything has become new. You have become a new creation. You are something new beyond this period. Uh, right? So look, 2 Samuel 23.20. Go to 2 Samuel 23.20. And Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kabziel, who had done many acts, he slew what? He slew two lion-like men, hybrid, right there. Two lion-like, this isn't some sort of, like they had long hair or, you know, no. Two lion-like men, I mean they looked like lions and they were men standing up like this. Of what? Of Moab. He went down also and slew a lion in the midst of the plain in the time of snow. So when you begin to notice this, when you begin to know there's something here, that we're not the only ones that are walking this earth. It's not just humans. There are other, um, the Nephilim and the seed of Satan. And then you have the old Adamic race. The people who are still unbelievers. They haven't upgraded. It's technically not an upgrade. So you see when you have this phone. This phone is an Apple iPhone. They had many phones. They had the first phone of the series. And they keep continuing in this series. Right? And this series is never ending. This is like the old Adamic race. You know, they keep the people in, in this world who haven't believed in Jesus, who haven't become a new creation yet. They're just, with new technology, they're just becoming better. They're upgrading themselves. But they're not new. To be new, it's to get rid of this phone and say, I'm going to create something new. Katesis. I'm going to be in Katesis. That is what you are. You are a Katesis. You are a new creation. Ah. You're not the same. You're not the same. Galatians 1.4, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God. To deliver us from this present evil world, because this world is evil. There's a lot of evil things that are going on in this world. There are a lot of evil creatures, evil spirits, evil things, right? That's why the Bible says it this way in the book of Ephesians chapter 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against what? Principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness, rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, right? But remember, this is not to, you know, get any fear into you because you're more powerful than all these Nephilim. You're more powerful than the seed of Satan. Well, it's only when you awaken to who you are, right, that you are something new. You're something greater. You're a new creation. You're supernatural. You are. God even calls you a God. But look at this. Look at this. Right. 1 Corinthians 2.16 For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that we may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So now we have the mind of Christ. When if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. And we now have the mind of Christ. The same one. The same one. That's why he says it this way in the book of Philippians 2.5. 2, 5. 2 5. Let this mind be in you. This mind. Let this mind. So he's not going to tell you what mind. He's going to now tell you what mind. So he's saying let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And Paul is saying, let this one, this mind of being equal with God, let this one be in you. Why? <laughs> because the scriptures everywhere, it says, know ye not that you are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwelleth in you? 
If the Spirit of God dwelleth in you, and we have the mind of Christ, and Paul is saying, let this mind, this one that says, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God, let this same mind be in you. And Jesus Christ himself calls you gods, to whom the word of God came. And as many as received him, did he give power to become the sons of God, not born after blood, not born after flesh, not born after the will of man, but of what? Of God. I'm telling you, when you awaken, when you awaken to this revelation that you are different than everyone else whom you go to school with, that you are, you have something new, you are something greater, you can do whatever you want in this world, anything that you want. Who's going to stop you? You have God inside of you. That's why it also says it this way in John 14, 23, Jesus answered and said unto them, if any man loved me, he, he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abodes in him. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all live inside of you. When you actually believe that they live inside of you, when you actually believe that you're a new creation, you're something new, you can do whatever it is that you want in this world. You know, you need to understand, if you're trying to get a job, right, and you have an interview, what you should really be doing is praying for all the other people. Let's say there's 20 people. You should pray for all the other 20 people and say, Lord, thank you for this job. I know who I am. This world is mine. Everything is mine. I have God and this job is mine. You should be praying for the other 20 people. That's the kind of mind you should have because we have the mind of Christ. Ah, uh, when you awaken to that. See, this is why, this is why I could do whatever I want in this world. I could do whatever I want. I'm building a ministry. I'm doing this and it's all going to come to pass. Why? Because I know who I am. I know who I am. I am partakers with Christ. When this world passes in the millennium reign, when the millennium reign comes, and we're going to get into that, who's going to be ruling? It's the Christians. We're gonna, uh, we, we own everything. Everything's ours. This world is ours. But it's, you have that same spirit. The same spirit, you'll have it then. It's just this flesh. It's just this body that's preventing you from realizing that. Right? Because when you get your new body, all your new senses will be able to be connected to the new body and you'll be able to have the realization. But you still have the same spirit. That same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, this is now Romans 11. That same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead like this is in you. It says it right there. It says it right in Romans 8. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Again, spirit that dwelleth in you. It's the same one. That's why Jesus said, go ye and preach the gospel of the kingdom, raise the dead, heal the sick, like it was nothing. It's just a commission. Why? Because when you awaken to the revelation of who you are, you can do these things. You can do miracles. You can do whatever. Why? Because you're a supernatural being. But you see, most Christians, they never come to this revelation or this realization. Why? When you look at Catholic Christians, they're never taught this. Most of them are worldly, right? They just go to mass maybe one time a year. They barely go to church and they live in the world. So they never realize, even the people that do go, they're not being taught this stuff. So they'll never realize, they'll never, never come to the full potential, to the realization of who they actually are. And the same thing with, with Protestant Christians. Their pastors have gone to institutions and they just regurgitate the information that they learned, which is fine. But you know, if your pastor never prophesies, if your pastor never heals, if your pastor never prays in tongues, he knows none of this stuff, the person to whom you're listening to, that's the highest you will ever go. Because he is teaching you. He can't teach you to pray in tongues. He can't teach you to interpret dreams. He can't teach you to prophesy. He can't teach you to heal. He can't do nothing. He doesn't know himself how to do it. So if he himself doesn't know how to do it, how is he going to teach you? If the ministers, right, the parry or whatever, the parish of, of the Catholic Church, they themselves don't know how to do it, how are they going to teach you? You see... It's when you begin to actually be in the Word of God. That's why Jesus said, They who live in my Word and continue in my Word, they are it is. They are who are my true disciples. And they shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you. It shall make you free. Right. Uh, it's a lot. I know. It's a lot. And um, this is just to give you an introduction. To give you, so you understand that there are different species you know there's the Nephilim and they're here they're preparing right now because they've always been preparing they're preparing for when we come back right to fight against us um, and obviously the devil seed and some of these Nephilim you know they were presidents heads of state you know businessmen very renowned businessmen um, people in Hollywood you know it's all this stuff they're everywhere you just don't know who they are um, even though, because the word renowned, it means conspicuous. It means not hiding. They're not hiding. They're out in the open. Anyway, that's about it, right? That should be about it for, for this message. It's just so you can awaken to who you are. Because when you begin to walk in that, when you begin to walk in that understanding that you are a completely new creation, 
you begin to separate yourself from the word because the word holy right just means separate it, it means separate from the word i forgot i think it's hagio right i think the greek word is hagio but don't don't correct me i mean don't um put me on that uh, but I know what it means. It means to be separate from the world. So when you begin to separate yourself from the world, when you begin to stop using your phone, when you begin to stop watching TV, when you begin to stop playing video games, and when you come home, all you have left is the Word. That's all really what you have is the Word. You have prayer, you have worship, and you begin to have revelation. You begin to awaken to who it is that you are. You begin to become a new creation, even though you are already something new, right? But yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, that's pretty much the message. It's just to give you, for you to wake up, for you to, to see this stuff. And I know there's a lot of, ex, you know, there's a lot of stuff that to go over, like the Nephilim, you know, um, the seed of Satan and stuff. But this was just to introduce to that. I'm really not too worried about that stuff. What I really want to get into the teaching is the, um, to get you to understand the millennium reign, right? What's going to happen, what rewards you can expect, and what other jobs because there are, there are going to be jobs, there are going to be positions available for you to work in in the millennial reign for those who have done service, who have served the Lord in this, um, in this time period, right, when, you, when you're here. Because most people, they don't serve, right? They just live normal lives, they go to church, you know, they, they pray and they worship and that's pretty much what they do for the rest of their, their life. They're going to obviously be saved, they're going to get their, their one crown, Right, but they're not going to be able to to actually have eternal eternal riches in the afterlife because that's why the Bible says, "Build up your treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust nor thief can break through and steal." Don't build your treasures here on earth. Um, but we'll get into all that. All right. So I hope I hope this was somewhat enlightening. I hope it was somewhat revelational that you maybe opened up your eyes in something. I know this was a lot. I just kind of pretty much like fed it down your throat because it's a lot. I know it's a lot. But if you're taking notes. If you're taking notes and you put down all the scriptures, all the verses that I spoke about, you can go back yourself and read it for yourself and be like, hmm, that's interesting, right? Um, but yeah, that's about it. That concludes our service for this week. Um, I think it was a lot shorter. It's pretty, pretty short. Uh, maybe like, what, half an hour or so. But look, go ahead. If you haven't already given your tithes for the week, we'll go ahead and do that now and also your offerings and your seeds go ahead and do that now okay right when i'm gonna go pray for you pray for each and every single one of you for your week pray for your offerings for your tithes and your and your seeds or whatever it is that you're gonna give and uh plant a seed of growth in you because we have a lot to learn this year and we're gonna learn a lot this year okay so father i just want to thank you right now for this day i want to thank you sir for this opportunity to always stand before your people to enlighten them, to give them revelation. And I pray that you increase them, Lord, that you plant the seed of revelation in them, that they may also have apocalypses, that they may grow in the revelation and in the understanding of you and in the understanding and the revelation of this world and the world that we currently live in, that they may do great things, become mighty men of valor, that they may understand and awakened to who they are, to the new creation that they are within you, their supernatural being, their extraterrestrial being, because extraterrestrial just means added more upon, right? And terrestrial just means the earth. So it's something extra upon the earth because we are something extra upon the earth. We are not like everyone else because we have you inside us, that they also awaken to this revelation and they may grow and do mighty, mighty things because you have called us to be the head and not the tail. So every single one of them on the other side of the screen watching, that they may grow to be heads and not tails, that they may awaken and that this seed that I planted in them gives them the curiosity to go and to continue and to learn more and to be awakened, Lord. And then I also pray that you bless them and you multiply their seeds and their offerings because it is written, it is written in the book of, ooh, when Paul was writing to the Corinthians, he said, he that soweth little will reap little, and he that soweth much shall reap abundantly in abundance, Lord. So they that reap and they sow this week, let you multiply their seed so that they may have abundance, Lord. Multiply it, multiply it. For it is also written, it is also written, Lord. Thank you. We give you thanks for this day and for this week and the opportunity to grow in the Spirit, 
and have revelation, Lord. I pray for each and every single one of them on the other side of this screen, and I declare and decree over their life that this year is a year of spiritual growth, of new dimensions and levels within the Spirit, so that they may go and attack this world and conquer it in Christ Jesus. Okay, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. All right, look, I'll see each and every single one of you guys in my next video next week. God bless.